My name is Stella Hall-Lampkin. Yes, it's hyphenated. Um, my business is operations manager for Bassi Pilates. Okay. Um, I'm also a Bassi faculty. I'm also a Pilates teacher. And currently, I am the Pilates Method Alliance president of the board of directors. So that's all of me in a little. <laughs> yes. And you owned a studio before, too. Yes, in New York, I did. Right. Yeah. So, and this is my this is my my curious question. It's like that everyone has a different Pilates path, right? And for some people, the gold star is their you know storefront, five thousand square foot, you know, nineteen hundred reformer <laughs> studio, right? And for others, it's to just just take care of the person in front of them, and just teach classes, and just stay on the front lines. And everyone has a different path. So. What made you decide to run this path for yourself from owning a studio, which is usually people's gold star, to moving on to other things? Uh, you know, it's interesting. I fell into Pilates by accident. Okay. So it wasn't um, my career, and I didn't have a, a path like everybody else was like, yeah, I want to get certified and I want to open a studio. Um, I, my first degree is in business computer information systems with a minor in dance and psychology. So I used to, <laughs> because the dance and psychology was my major. And then um, my professor discouraged me because he was like, you'll never make enough money in, a, in this amount of time, which was my goal. So then I was like, okay, I need to switch. And I've always been a, a computer geek. So it was a nice transition for me. But I come from a fitness background with a dance background. And then because of my dance background, I got into Pilates and the gym gave me an opportunity. And then they gave me a studio inside. And then I built that up to open up my own business with my husband. And that's how I got my studio. But 9-11 happened and a lot of my clients were affected by that. So we, we went back down, sized back inside the gym. And, you know, falling into operations, I've always been in a managerial position, no matter where I've been. It's like I've started at the bottom, worked my way up, started at the bottom, worked my way up. Mm -hmm. And getting into this role that I'm in now was purely just a chance. It wasn't planned. It wasn't, you know, sometimes I say God gives you things just because it's your right time. Yes. And my first day on Twitter, this job position opened up mm -hmm. and one of my oldest clients, Jill Oppenheimer said, why don't you just try it? The worst that they could do is not take you. Right. I'm in New York. I'm like, they're never going to give my, my resume a second look because I sure they want someone local. Mm -hmm. And I got the phone call and they were like, we want to start interviewing you. And three months it's later, I'm like, yeah, and three yeah. months later, I'm, I'm operations manager for Bassi, moving out here. Wow. And it's been over 10 years. And so it wasn't, you know, for me, I hate to say it was a bunch of accidents, but it wasn't anything in, intentional. Yeah. My intention was to be the best, at, the best person I could be. Yeah. And that itself would present opportunities. You know, I tell people I've only done two interviews my whole life. Everything what? else has been like, yeah, two job interviews my whole life. Everything else has been, we'd like you to do this, or we think about that, or so it's, it's different, you know? So I've been you, blessed in that way. So do you like, uproot your kids, family, everyone just like, we're moving to, across the country? Okay, so my kids are grown. Okay. My youngest is three. <laughs> <laughs> How, okay, so there you go. That is the most authentic compliment because I had no clue how cool, like, I would not peg you for grown kids. Yeah, my kids are grown. I'm already a grandmother. Um, okay. My youngest is 36, so there was no uprooting. There was no... <laughs> <laughs> it was a discussion with my husband going, are you coming with me now or are you joining me later? Okay. Um, and, and his attitude was, you go do this now because if it doesn't work, you still need to have a place to come back to. And that was the real only conversation that happened. But otherwise than that, there, was, there were no kids. No. no. <laughs> it was, it's mama's time. <laughs> right. Yes. That's good for you. <laughs> um, but it's so funny what you say about having those two interviews though and like the jobs and not having a, pl 
plan, but being intentional with it. One of the things I say to my kids and so when I was working with youth as well is it's not about what you want to do when you grow up. It's about who you want to become. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you have an understanding of who you want to become, who you want to be, that can have expression wherever you go. Right. It does. Right. So, and yeah. yeah. No, please. And my mom spoke that to me from from a very young age. You know, she always spoke into, you know, it's it's your it's the personality, it's your integrity, it's how you carry yourself. Um, those are the things that matter, not what you do for a living. And then on top of that, she spoke into like, you're going to be the one running a business one day. You're going to be the one in charge of this and that. And, you know, you're going to be the one able to give opportunities to other people. You know, she spoke those things into me growing up. And as I got older and older, it just became, it was just part of me. Yes. That's awesome. So now what's your, so as operation manager, does that mean basically you do everything for Vassy? Because that's usually what <laughs> that job does, right? So. Oh, wow. This job morphed into more than I could ever imagine. So um, my first responsibility is being Rails assistant. So um, I, I manage his calendar, his events. Um, I assist him on courses. And then after that, it oversees everything that Bassi does. Do I do everything physically anymore? No, but I do have my hand in things to just that helicopter view. Yeah. And then the things that I have my hand in are things like video editing, um, the course materials, you know, looking at um, agreements, the, that kind of operations, as well as the day-to-day -day stuff. Isn't that fascinating how like our passions and our skill sets marry us to these jobs? Like you're saying, like your tech background and your like computer background and stuff makes you competent with the back end stuff. And then your teaching helps you understand the language that they're speaking in the room. Yeah, yeah. And it, it is a perfect marriage for me. I am the people here call me Uber Geek because I, I've built three. I've been part of three website developments with Rail. And I'm the only one who can talk to the software developers in their language to get what they need, to get what we need. <laughs> and then when it breaks down, everybody comes to me and I have to go back and talk to them. But it is. I mean, I love computers. I'm a gamer when I'm not doing this really? stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, it's, so it's just always for me. It's always, I'm always in it in some form. Right. So when you were running your, your Pilates studio and you were just, I mean, obviously as a owner, you're doing all these things too, but like, do you feel like this is a kind of a greater expression of your gifts than what you're doing before? Yeah. Yeah. Um, everything, I think every experience is translatable if you're willing yeah, to continue learn from it. So um, my skills as a business owner, hiring people, understanding how to build a team, um, you know, understanding what competition means. And I put that in quotes because I never believe in competition. I think we're all in it together. Um, if I can't do something, I have no problems referring you to a studio down the block right. or to another instructor. It's, that's just the way I feel. So yeah. I've learned kind of that open business model where, you know, I used to get together with other business owners and let's all talk about how we can do better, what, what do we need for our industry. Right. So all of that brought, those skills just came right into Bassey. Yeah, yeah. I think because maybe it's my, my athlete background, but I have eager to ask me if I believe in competition or collaboration, as you're just saying a minute ago. My answer would be yes. Like, I would say both. Right, and because there's a sense of like I need that collaboration. I like to work off each other. I'm more than happy to share systems, ideas, all those different things. But I need the competition, like in terms of I like to chase after something. I and I also mm -hmm. like to be in a position where people can chase after me. If you know what I mean, like I mean, there's a sense. Oh, of I get it. My, yeah. In my head, yeah. I just need to have the like, competition on both ends. It's not like a, a stomp on your neck, like really evil competition, but I just need <laughs> something to chase after. It's healthy. Yeah. It's, it's a healthy, healthy competition. competition. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But what's challenging in this industry, there really isn't anyone to chase after. I feel like all yeah. of us at this stage are kind of leading the way for other people to chase us. 
Yes. So it's kind of different in in when I take it out of like my my martial arts background or like you coming from an athletic background. When I take it out of that, I'm like, who am I chasing after? I'm not. I'm creating a trail for someone else to follow, someone else to kind of get to where I am and exceed it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, and that's and that's true in that way. I think of like in, in my geographical context. I was talking about this with my colleague just before. Right across the street, like if I look out my window, I can see uh, Lifetime Athletic, like mm -hmm. right next to us. Right? <laughs> oh my god! So, um, so and they're not a competition because they're a massive building. However, within that building, there's a Pilates department, and I'm colleagues, you know, with all their instructors and stuff. And even then, still, we're not competing, but in a sense we are also trying to get as many people doing plotting as possible. Yes, right. But that's the end goal for all of us. We're all trying to get as many people and people will gravitate through different venues, so to speak, or different pathways to Pilates. And then they'll find a style or a teacher that speaks to them and mm -hmm. they're hooked. Right. Yeah, exactly. We have so many, well, this is like, there's so many, billions of people on this planet and if we have a understanding of what our niche is who we are all those different things we'll, the people that are for us will be for us absolutely you attract what you you attract what you what like you know people that will gravitate towards your personality your skill your energy all yeah. of that pulls into who comes to you as a client and it happens very organically a lot of times yeah absolutely so then we have your Pilates studio ownership moving into Bassey, and now you're like the MVP at Bassey, and <laughs> you decide that that's not enough, so you get connected with the PMA, take your name in the hat, take your name out of the hat, and then put your name back in the hat again. Wow. Um, so that, again, it, it, that's a cute way of putting it. I actually like it. Um, I, you know, I, I'm always looking to be of service. That's my, my main thing. I'm always looking to be of service. So um, last year when everything happened with the PMA, they approached me to be a part of their board. So um, my first position was an appointment. It wasn't a voting in. So again, I didn't have to interview anything. It was like, hey, we think, you know, we're, we're having this issue and we think you'd be a great person to come in. Not knowing what was happening in the background, I was like, sure, this is a great way for me to be of service. Yeah. And then everything happened and I, I pulled out and um, none of my decisions were ever done in a vacuum. So I'm always talking to people in the industry, out of the industry, um, other professionals in other industries that are going through similar changes. So when it was time for board elections to come up again, you know, I was like, I still have, I still have a service. I still can be of service. How, you know, let me just see if yeah. I can, you know, if the industry will still, you know, trust me to keep moving the PMA forward. Mm -hmm. And I got elected to the board. And again, shocked, honored, humbled, but like sitting back going, okay, they've put me, now I'm back in, now it's time for me to walk that talk. And then to be taken to the next level, to be president, I was like, this is uber trust. This is like, you know, again, not anything in my brain that I wanted, not anything that I, I intentionally said, yeah. this is where I'm going. I just right. approached everything as, I still have a service to offer. I still feel that the industry has so much to grow on and I want to be a part of that. And whether I was on the board or not, president or not, I still would have been part of that, that process in right. some way. And so I hear like, I, we share a sense of optimism. I can hear it in your voice where it's just like, this can still be something. So I want to be a part of it. And not in a prideful way, say like I want my name on it, but I want to be see it become something and yeah. feel good within myself that I was a part of it becoming something. Yeah, that's truly it. It's it's nothing about my pride or my ego. If my ego was attached to this, I would not have gone back in. <laughs> right. But I just I believe that Pilates is so valuable, but at this stage it's so behind 
on so many levels. And I'm not talking just from a DEI perspective, but I'm talking from a, a professional perspective. Pilates should have been recognized as a vocation many years ago. I mean, there's no reason why my experience as a personal trainer, my certification or qualification as a personal trainer is recognized and considered more valuable than my Pilates training. And not so to discount spend, what I did. Yeah. Cause, yeah, because you spend so much more money. It's so much more in-depth. I can do a Pilates certification mail order this weekend and have it in my hand by the Friday. Right? Like, right. But with Pilates, our investment level is so much higher. Exactly. But yet the respect level and the value level is so yeah. much lower. Right. And that's what I'm fighting for. That's what I believe in. Because I believe once we get that established – a lot of our DEI issues can be resolved. You know, personal training and the fitness industry, they're in colleges, they're in, you know, junior colleges. You can get an associate's degree, all of that. And, you know, it's, I liken it to, you know, my aunt, when I was growing up, owned a beauty shop. And if you think about how many entrepreneurs started that way, owning beauty shops, barber shops, you know, especially right. for people of color, that was that was how we created generational wealth for ourselves. Yes, keep and talking. I'm the, just grabbing something while you're while you're saying that. So. <laughs> and I think the Pilates industry has that same potential. We just need to push that forward, yes. and and that's how and you know that's what I believe in, and that's where I see the value. Yes. On a sidebar, have you seen this before? I'm trying to see. No, I haven't. Okay. So this is a Canadian ten dollar bill. Yeah, no, it's a Canadian dollar, but I haven't seen I haven't seen Canadian money in about twenty years, so I'm I'm out. So this is this is I've said this to some of my friends because I think it's so so powerful. When you're talking about generational wealth and salons, this is Viola Desmond. Mm hmm And she is a black woman from Nova Scotia who similar to Rosa Parks sitting in the back of the bus was in a movie theater and was told she was not allowed to sit on the main floor with the white people. She had to sit on the upper floor with the other people. people. Mm -hmm. She was a, a beauty salon owner. She owned products and so she was on in town doing like some conferences or whatever it is that she was doing. So she was doing business in this small town. Her car was needed repair she had time to burn went to a movies and this happened mm. so she uh re you know refused was arrested was wrongfully arrested was charged went to court and then was misrepresented in court was found guilty all those things and the canadian government many years later you know admitted apologized and so she stands as an example of civil rights in canada in a, in, a, in a province where there was no actual like segregation rules, but mm -hmm. but they were just it was unspoken rules that in this town this is just how it was. So black people knew just that's just how it is. Don't go there. But because she was from out of town, she went to this. So she didn't know that. Right. Yeah. So two years ago, they decided to put this woman. She's the first black woman, first non like royalty on a note mm -hmm. in the world. That's amazing. Yes. So talking about generational wealth, all from a barbershop beauty salon, this is how she got out and found prosperity as a woman and then stood and she now stands for civil rights and all these different things. Yeah. So um, that's my, uh, that's my. That's, that's amazing though, because again, I think seeing ourselves is a huge yeah. value to helping us understand that we can do things and we are these things and seeing, you know, seeing that representation on money when all the other money is not that tells you that that money is made for you too. And because you see it, you're more apt to kind of want to create more of it. Right. And not to put words in your mouth with the PMA, but when you think about different steps and where we want to go with it and how and the legacy we want to leave right yeah what's my legacy <laughs> that's the question um you know i want to be known for 
the person that bridges the gap between the past and the future. I know that it's it's not going to happen in my two-year term or my four years on the board, but I want to be known as the one who bridged that gap. I think we learn from our past. We can't discount the past, but the future has so much promise, and I want to be known for the one that bridged that gap to to kind of set the pathway for the future generation to continue driving that bus forward. Absolutely. Um, I being Canada, I was also invited to be on that board, invited to apply for some of those roles, all those different things, and I gracefully declined because I felt like the things that I'm working on right now, it just wasn't alignment in terms of vision, and I, mm-hmm. and and for a bunch of personal reasons, why I just felt it wasn't a good fit for me. But I still gave it a lot of thought. I still gave it a lot of thought for this one reason. How do we navigate? all of the experts telling us this is the way that we do this. We should be doing this for the black community. We should be doing this for a racialized community. We should be doing this for the plus. We should, and everyone has an opinion and they can all be right, right? Everyone has an yeah, opinion on that bed. Exactly. So, so I was already, that was the one thing, even before I applied for the job, I was saying, okay, how I navigate, how I would take my path and how, strong I would be on my position on my path and how collaborative I would be with my path and all those things. So that's really my question is like, how are you navigating everyone having an opinion on what should be done first to get to what we just talked about? Um, you know, I, I, I don't, again, like I always say, I never work in a vacuum and I have an amazing board. Um, some of them are lawyers and some of them are strategic strategists, you know, strategic planners. But outside of that, I also have an amazing group of resources that are other businesses going through the same conversations. Um, everyone is going to have their priorities. And, you know, unfortunately right now that we have a lot of priorities that we need to, to do. Um, in my mind, the first thing is developing trust. And with that trust, you know, things happen very organically. Again, once you have a trust established, people will help and help you move where the priorities are. Mm-hmm. Um, my, 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 in my mind, it's setting that foundation, getting that foundational work done. What does that look like? You know, the bylaws are being written, making sure that um, everything that we do, we look from a different prism and it's not just about the style of pilates that you do classical versus contemporary or versus this or that or matte versus comprehensive it's looking at almost you almost have to take that helicopter view and then start zeroing in and then come back up and look at it again from a helicopter view and zeroing in and it's going to take a lot of um i want to say re re-navigating you know because it's, it, we know where the North Star is, but we know there's many paths to get there. So we may find ourselves going north one day, and then we may have to go northeast and come back north. And then we may have to go northwest and then come back north. Or we may have to go totally east, circle around. And so it's just taking that and just always readjusting, readjusting, readjusting. But in that, in that process, not losing sight of what the North Star is, Yes. Nor looking, nor nor forgetting that in that process, we have a whole bunch of people we got to bring with us, right. and that's that's where my challenge is: getting, keeping this going, and yes. trying to bring others along with it. And again, that's that trust factor coming into right. play. Absolutely. Um, well, and you, know, as you said that, I'm listening to you, and I'm also hearing the systems and the process and the community that you built with Bassi, right? Not you, but I mean, yeah. like Bassi is built collectively, right? Yes, so, yes. So with that, when I was speaking with Rael on the show, he couldn't stop raving about you. Like, I would not be here <laughs> without Rael. And I would not be here, not here without Rael. <laughs> right? Like, that's like, that is your office spouse, right? Like, you know, yes. Like, like, so I, I appreciate that. And can you just talk, now you've been with, with Bassi for years. I want to get to Sonia's comment in a section, in a, in a second, in a second, but I, I just want to touch on Bassi for a second here. Uh-huh. Um, 
You're so you've been with them for almost ten years now, over ten years. Over ten years, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna give you like full reign to <laughs> brag for like three minutes. What has Bassi done in the last ten years in terms of its growth, teacher training programs, countries, those things? Just just talk for a second about that because when I was talking to Ralph, he was very humble about it as well. But like you guys have done some great work. So just well, thank you. So this is this is a story that, um, and I may be kind of you know you know legends start and then you know they become urban legends, but you know when I you know I've had conversations with Rail, I think a lot of people don't realize he came here on a job offer, and at that time I think he had maybe a hundred dollars in his pocket, mm-hmm. and. To take that, and he had no intention of creating an education program. None. That was not. Again, that wasn't his end goal. It, it just happened organically, and I think that's something real. And I both believe in is that organic process of things, and you never know where you're going to end up, and where you end up is always a bigger blessing than what you thought. Yeah. Um, with that being said, we are in. 140 cities around the world. Um, we, this year, within the last year, we are starting to have relationships with instructors and studios in places like Ghana, like Nigeria, yeah. um, I think Kenya. Um, we had our first program in Egypt that ran successfully during COVID. I mean, yeah. these are things that um, when you think about a company, especially a Pilates education company, mm-hmm. when you think about that, that's what I'm proudest of. Reaching areas right. that, you know, one, have so many issues with women and, you know, women having rights and ability to do things. And then on another side of it, entering countries that in America's mind are considered third world countries and not wealthy. And, you know, um, I hate to quote what other people have said, but, you know, having that perception that, you know, Pilates would never thrive there. And yet our, our graduates are, are doing amazing things in these areas. Yeah, so exactly. that, those are the things I brag about outside of our, our, our community, our family, um, we have a true familiar spirit. Um, sometimes it can be good for business and bad for business. Yeah. Um, and Bassy, my nickname is Bassy Mama or Mama Bassy. Um, and it's a name that's evolved over years. And I have people who I've never met come into the studio, you know, and just give me a hug. Oh my God, Mama, I'm so happy to see you. And I'm sitting here going, that's great. I'm happy to see you too. What's your name again? What's your name? Sorry. Hey, yeah. <laughs> You know, I always joke about my grandfather because he had so many grandkids, he couldn't remember our names. And he was just like, come here, not you, come here, not you, yeah, you. (laughs) And, you know, when I feel like I'm a mama to, you know, at one time, 10,000 plus people, it's just an amazing, embraceive environment because I never thought I'd be part of a company like that. Nothing in the fitness industry has been like that. Um, I've worked for Grumman Data Systems, which is a, an employee-based company. Um, my family worked there, and I still didn't have the love and support that I have in this business. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what I brag on. I'm not going to brag on the education, because everybody has great education in my mind. Right? It's how you use your education. I'm not going to brag on course materials, because, again, everybody has great course materials. Yep. It's how you use it. Right. So I brag on things that are what I call the non-tangibles, the things that people look for. And right. it, again, Bassing may not be for everybody because we have that, that spirit, that familiar community. Some people are, are not comfortable in that environment. For sure. And I'm, I'm cool with that too. But I love what we are. And I just love being a part of that. I love what we are. That's, I mean, that's, that's the end of it right there. And even like with the PMA, the intangibles of building that trust, which should be tangible is, is something we're talking about. But with Bass, you have that. And with Rao too, we had like, I call it just real talk. I was like, do you have any enemies? Because <laughs> I know that you do. Like you, can't, like you can't navigate this life 
and no. a warm, fuzzy <laughs> community of people that love you and not have someone on the other end who can't stand you. It just cringes when you talk, right? Like, that's fine, too. It is. It's, and you know what? I find if I'm not making people cringe, if I'm not making people uncomfortable, I'm not doing my job. I don't want everybody to love me. I want people to challenge me. I want people to ex be free to express their opinions. And, and Rail has created that environment. There's, there are times we will not agree, but we will sit down and discuss it and come to an agreement. And that's our strong point. And I feel that way about everything in my life. You don't have to agree with me, but you do have to respect me. Right. As a human being, full stop. Yeah. 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 The, uh, and I always say it to my wife all the time when we're talking about, like, my interactions with Andrew, the high octane, this, this clinic that I'm in. And there'll be times that we don't see eye to eye on something. And he'll talk with me about it. He'll have a conversation. And it'll be a hard conversation. And we may not... You, like we may take a breather, come back, talk it through by the end of the day, we're fist bump, we're good, okay, we're moving this way. Yeah. We hear each other. And I always go home to Alice, I'm like, I respect the fact that he is brave enough to call me out on stuff. Yeah. I can't stand it when people are just like just smile and nod and let it go. Mm -hmm. afraid, and because he's not afraid to have those hard conversations, I we walk together. Yeah, we grow together. We are like we both know that we're on the same path. We might not agree with the method, but we're still mm -hmm. going the same way. There's no question we're going the same way. Even if we butt heads, we're still going the same way. Exactly, and that's how I approach the PMA. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. I approach everything that way. We, as long as I know we're both heading in the same direction, we may not agree, but we're going that way. Right. And we'll find different ways. And that's where that north and northeast and all of that comes into play. Because yeah. there are many ways to solve us a problem. Right. Exactly. Well, um, as we were talking at the beginning, is that 52 minutes already? We were like almost half an hour. Um, <laughs> you were right. You said that you were going to make it comfortable. I'm very comfortable. <laughs> okay, I'm glad. I'm glad. One of the we're talking about is that, yes, we were going to talk, talk about PMA. We'll talk about BASI. We'll talk about all these different things. But you said all the stuff is fine, because, but it doesn't define me. And yeah. for those who are watching right now, I just wanted just to echo that because we think that our job defines us. And in sport, you think, you know, I've had guys from the NBA in here, and you think, oh, I'm an NBA player, and then you get cut, and then you have this identity crisis. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So just just talk, just mention like what you're saying in that. I, you know, it's interesting because you know everybody thinks just because I am where I am, it was easy, and it wasn't. And there were many hard conversations around where I, how I got to be where I am. Mm -hmm. And what I've always told Rayal, and what I've always told anyone, I'm not attached to the outcome. I'm not attached okay. to any outcome whatsoever because when this chapter of my life ends when this part of me ends it gives me an opportunity to have a new chapter it gives me an opportunity to have something else my experience comes with me it, the titles all of that comes with me but it's not who i am as stella and at the end of the day when i go home and and my two cats are there my <laughs> They know Stella. They know that's who they, they, you know, they're like, yeah, mom, that's great. Everything you went through today, but now it's you and who are you? And, you know, and that's what I tap into, you know, like I said, a lot of this stuff, it wasn't a plan. It wasn't, you know, this is, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go out and do, it yeah, wasn't yeah, that. Like yeah, no, I, you know, and I've thought about doing vision boards and I, I don't do that. It's just my, my intention of what I want out of life. Yeah, we're not not and vision boards for the, for the record. No, 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 please. I'm not, believe me, I, people are telling me I, I should and I've, I, and I, I've done, my mother sent me one that I did when I was, I think about 10 years old. And it wasn't even a board. It was just a piece of paper that I had written and I had a dream box. And she sent me that. And inside of it, it said, when I grow up, I want to be able to walk to the beach and drive to the snow. Guess what? I can walk to the beach and I can drive to the snow. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not knocking the power of intention or vision boards, but I just know that when chapters end, 
Yeah. It doesn't mean I die. I'm not written out of the book because it's still my story. It's still my my book to write, my my tale to tell. So I'm not. I'm I'm just Stella at the end of the day. That's who I am. So no, I it's a like I told you, it's a blip in my life. Yes, it is. Right. I love those. I love that. Just embracing the chapter of life that you're in, and with that, um, opening a whole new read a conversation here but like uh, when you understand that recognizing too that this is a time when you need to say no to some things because mm -hmm. that's in line with the chapter that you're in right so right this there's a season for everything there's a season to reap there's a season to sell all of that i truly believe in the, some of those bible principles i mean i believe in all of them but that's always been one of mine you know everything has its season relationships everything so i believe that you know right now this is the season i'm in and then when the season ends just like with anything else you have a moment where you have to plant some more seeds you have to nurture yep. it and a new right. season opens up and you sow right. again yes love it um my my wife jokes about the fact that people just say don't even say my last name anymore they're just martin i had a conversation with martin and people <laughs> No, like, you're at a place where people don't even say your last name anymore. Like, that's so cool. It is. That's, it's pretty cool because I see Stella and it was like, oh, Stella from Bassey, from this, <laughs> from that, from this. They know you, right? So keep doing what you're doing. You're in such a good spot. Like, you are in the right place at the right time. And I'm happy. You know, someone asked me, you know, you've done all these things. Are you happy? And I, and I had to pause because I was like, no one's ever thought to ask me if I was happy, but I never had to think about it because I was, I have, yeah. I, and I, I still am. I'm, I'm at peace and I'm, I'm enjoying every step of the process. Great. Well, I, I'm happy for you. I know that like your Pilates community with Bassi is, is thriving and then the PMA is in an interesting spot where they have all the right pieces in play. And like we said, there's going to be some, you know, armchair quarterbacks on, in terms of what play that you run next. But I think that <laughs> the quarterback is pretty good right now. So, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hoping, I'm waiting for football season. So I'm so happy you use that. That's what... <laughs> I am. I love football, so I'm dying for the season to start. Mm -hmm. Outside of the Olympics, the summer sports don't do much for me. No, it's so. not so true. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> just in the last few minutes we have here, so you got. I love you, Stella. Um, uh, and Sonia's comment ties into what we're saying about trust, right? Trust will be with the Black Lives community because there isn't much of it right now. Uh, the black community, the black flies community, were the ones who spoke out and brought the PA to his knees. And I just want to say something to that. Like, it's one thing to brag about. It. I'm not knocking Sonny by any means, but like, when our attitude was like, "Yeah, we took them down," as opposed to, "We put attention on this thing," and then that caused a shift. There's a there's a different language when we're, you know, it's like when you see guys revolting and they're dancing on a, a torn statue or you're dancing on the fact that we've brought in a, a racial awakening and there's a there's an awakening that's happening and there's awareness that's happening and stuff like that i am one who wants to celebrate the fact that there is there is awakening there is awareness and that we can move forward with it more than celebrating the fact that we we took them down that so like, that's no it's not weird because someone said something to me the other day about that and they said it takes Anyone can tear something down. It takes real leadership to build it up again. Thank you. You know, that's, yes, finish your thought. Go ahead. <laughs> and, um, and, and she said, that's why I voted for you for the board. She was like, she says, it took strength for you and, you know, everybody else to speak out and do what you did. But she takes an even stronger person to step back in to rebuild it into what you want to see. And that's, and that's what it is. It's, I'm not, I'm not discounting anybody who's been in the fight longer or who's done it. Again, it's just, a, it was a season and a timing and it was just happens to be the right timing that people are able to hear and listen to what was being said. Yes. And that is where change happens because we can, people hear things, but they're not listening. Right. And 
that, you know, it just happened to be that time where people are ready to listen and now we can make the changes that need to happen. Yes, exactly. That's like full circle to kids. Like when I, when they say, well, this is wrong. It's like, well, what do you want to do about it? I don't know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a cheap gift to recognize the wrong in something. That is the cheapest gift ever. Exactly. Wrong. So what are we doing about it? Who's going to step up and make that change? Who's going to put their neck on the line so that exactly. everyone criticizes them when they're doing it? You know what I mean? So, like, kudos to you for stepping up and doing that. Because, like, I know, like, like I said, I could have put my name in the hat and I chose not to. So the fact that you did and you're there, I'm cheering for you. Thank you. I, again, I don't take it lightly. I take it very seriously. I'm still um, humbled all the time about it. Um, and I'm still on that. I don't believe it happened, but I've got to do the work now. <laughs> well, I'm cheering for you, my friend. As you do the Thank work. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, coffee. Yes, I know. I'm. Um, Pilates Hotties IG, thank you so much for joining us. If you get a chance, watch the replay from my Friday conversation with Angela. So powerful, so amazing, so inspirational. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm still, I'm going to do, I have to do a freestyle at some point. I'm coming right back to that conversation with her because it was so inspiring. Um, so check that out. And to everyone else who joined us today, thank you so much. Um, thanks for popping in, everybody. I saw Joanne was in here as well. Grasser. Yeah. Uh huh. And um, yeah, so your your people are here. <laughs> they're not my people. They're everybody's people. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, there's certain people that follow that that are um, follow you on Instagram that aren't my followers. That because uh. we're alive, they they jump in. So that's sorry. That's what I meant by. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, I do appreciate your time so much. Thank you for the conversation. And uh, so, yeah, let, let's continue to uh, chat. And turn you yeah, on. I'm around. I tell everybody I'm always available. Surprisingly enough, even at 2 o'clock in the morning, people are shocked. But I'm always available. I'm, like, I'm an open book. So if they have questions, comments, I'll, I'll, I, it's all good. It's all good. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to sign you off now. Thank you. Take care. All right. All right. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.